yeah, now it's a piece moving about. So let's see when it hit the bottom, it should uh, like stay there. Yeah, that should be cool. So let's see if it, uh, the bottom, let's see how many times the message is written out. So let's see here. Yeah, so you can see. So basically what we want to do is when we hit uh, the bottom, we want to uh, call a new method, or we want to set a new tetramino. So you can see, say this uh, new get next, or maybe set uh, next tetramino. So that's simple enough. We just want to go up. Yeah, let's do it down here, or maybe above. So you say set next tetramino, set that equal to a function. Then we just grab uh, this logic and put it right here. And then instead, here we just want to say this dot set. Uh, next tetramino like that. Uh, let's see here. Hmm. Just want to make sure that we set uh, as it should be removed, right? Let's see here. what's all happened. Yeah, it should must. Uh, so we should uh, need to set it to the thing here as well. So we say set to the C again. Let's see now. So now the piece that should be falling down and then stay there, and then the new piece should be coming down. So let's see. And when that hits that piece, it should be moving down and it should be working as it should here. So that's cool. Let me just take a quick break, guys, and I'll be right back with the continuation from here. Yeah, so I'm back guys. Uh, so I don't really think this line of code is necessary. So let's remove that. So let's see if it works anyway. Yeah, that seems to be working fine. Anyway, um, just to make sure why not set a wipe position to zero as well. And do not forget to import uh, yeah, increment the tetramino here in the stat manager. So if you remember, we have this increment tetramino method on the stat manager. So we say inc. Uh, tetramino, tetramino, uh, this dot current tetramino dot id like that. So let's see. Yeah, you can see that it added a one here to the uh, set piece. And I just figure out uh, saw that they are actually in the wrong direction here. So hmm. Yeah. Well, we we'll fix fix that later. Anyway, let's create some more uh, movement definitions. So add a move down, down. So let's create move left as well. And uh, then we have uh, move right, of course. Then we have move rotate like that. And uh, all of them will need to more or less uh, make this a check here so we can just paste that into everything here. Like that, so we have that on this. Okay, so move left, that means that we want to go negative one in the x direction. Move right means that we want to go one right, uh, one to the right, so let's change this to x, this to a minus. That should be it, and then for move rotation, it's a little bit more complicated, but here we just want to say, let's say that it will take a, a, a direction in which you can uh, rotate as well. So we can say it should be equal to they are or one. And here we just want to say zero zero they are of course. And then we say uh, ctx dot rotation equals ct uh, dot get rotation uh, dr. I think that was what we called it, right? Let's see. Get rotation, yes. 
So everything we need to do right now is just to map everything this, uh, all of those to some event. So we have already the, the automatic movement done. So we say input uh, dot uh, pressed. Uh, you can see up. Let's copy this a couple of times. And here we have uh, down maybe and left and right and right like that. So let's just add on uh, implement all of those. So if we press up, we want uh, to uh, rotate it. So we say move rotate like that. If we press down, we want to say move down. Of course, this don't move left. And lastly, this don't move right. Uh, so let's see. You should be able to control piece and rotate it as well. Yeah, that seems to be the case here. And I can hold press down to make it like move quicker and other stuff like that. Well, as you can see, even if I get a full row like this, it won't like empty the rows. So let's implement that as well. So for doing that, we will need a new. Uh, we'll add it uh, here to the move down here. So we will say, uh, uh, what do you say? We want to check the rows. So you say this dot check rows. So let's create that method. So you say check uh, rows. Won't take any arguments like that. So you just want to say I have two variables. Uh, Boolean value that we call full, then a removed variable that will uh, uh, count how many lines we clear. Anyway, so we just loop through uh, the bug control, uh, but from the top, uh, from the bottom. So uh, we just do it like this instead. A regular uh, looping here. Then we just want to set the full variable to true. Uh, then we just want to loop through every block in that, or every column in that row. So we say j is less than this dot calls j plus plus. Then we just want to say if this dot block controls, a uh, block control, sorry, add j and add i, if that is solid. Then we want to set the full equal to false. And we want to break uh, this full loop. And then here we just say if we have a full line still, then we want to just want to remove a row. Add i like that increment the uh, removed uh, count and then just uh, update the st uh, statistic of how many lines we have cleared so let's just add that uh, post here to the stat manager we'll keep track of the level and uh, the score here so just add all of that to the stat manager as well uh, so right, yeah. So here we were. So we just imp uh, increment the lines, and then we just want to increment i here, so that we check uh, the next row and so on and so forth again. And here we just say if the removed lines, if I've removed any lines, so if that's greater than zero, then we just want to add this uh, some score. To, so we say add score with how many lines we have removed. And then we want to check if we should level up. And uh, those two methods we will have on the stat manager as well. So let's just create them uh, right now. So say add score, lines, hello, cleared, maybe. And check level up. So that should be it. Let's just do it like this. Yeah. 
so the one method we don't have implemented yet is this remove row one so let's create that so just like this and that will take which row we should remove uh, so just for convenience let's just grab the block control so say this block control like that then we set i equal to uh, loop uh, from uh, uh, from i then we will loop upwards again uh, but not all the way up so it's really important here that we have greater than zero and here we have greater or equal than zero because basically what we want to do is we want to copy the value the line above the the line we want to remove and uh, drag that one step down and that's exactly what we do in this uh, line of code here so say j j is less than uh, this dot uh, calls j plus plus and now you say bc add j i is uh, set a type uh, to the bc uh, j add i minus one dot id like that and that should now actually work here so let's reload the page and we've got some errors here so let's see tetris 131 uh, here uh, yeah j let's see here i do my best here to <laughs> play quick we'll probably implement a hard drop functionality to the game that's uh quite good yeah so now you can see that we can uh, remove lines from the thing here so let's see if we can clear two lines in one go as well yeah that seems to be the case so that means that this works at least and you can see here that I can snipe in pieces and game is actually now starting to take some real shape here but probably not that fun to just get uh, <laughs> what do you say the set, uh, set piece all the time uh, that's quite annoying let's just check here what the SPs look like oh the SPs and the set piece look the same I probably have something wrong in the shape definitions so let's see here uh, yeah, they were the exact same thing here. So let's. It should be the set should be like this, uh, not like that. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, that should be it. Let's see. Yeah, that's now the right piece there. Good we uh, we uh, fixed that error. That was quite annoying. Let's actually now uh, now when we added those uh, things to the to the stat manager, let's actually increment the scoring and the level up and all the stuff like that. Anyway, so the sc scoring in uh, Tetris is quite complicated. Uh, it depends on which row you are going on uh, oh, sorry you, uh, if you get uh, clear a clearer uh, row for the first time and all stuff like that so I'll leave a link to this post in the description where you can read more about the scoring but anyway the way we, we will implement it is we will need to check if it is the first time we level up so uh, so we guess you set that equal to false here when we call the reset function and we also need to keep a reference here to the start level. So we say start level, and that's just equal to the start level of zero, uh, where the start level here is an argument to the function. So we say like that. And then we just set the level is equal to uh, this dot start level. Pause. Let's just move this down here. Like that. So basically what we want to do when we check for level up uh, then we want to just check if uh, we have incremented the first level 
then we just want to say if this dot lines is greater or equals to this dot level plus one, oh sorry, uh, times ten plus ten, like that. Uh, actually, we can do it. Yeah, this looks better. Yeah, that's the same thing. Should be right. Let's see. They had a formula. Uh, no, this is for the scoring. Uh, yeah, anyway, this works as well. Uh, so if that's the case, then we just want to increment the level. Uh, like that. Uh, else, uh, we want to check if this dot lines is greater or equal than this dot start level plus one times ten or one hundred, because uh, one hundred is the maximum uh, starting level you can have. Anyway, then we want to just want to set this dot first level. Set it equal to true, and I just want to increment the level, of course. So that's it for the uh, when we want to level, how we want to level up the game, and then for core clicking the the score, it's just uh, simple as we want to say how many rows we clear in a row. So we have uh, one clear row, two clear rows, and then a triple, and lastly a Tetris when you clear four continuous rows. So we can just get that uh, score like this. So if we clear zero rows, then we will return zero, and so on and so forth. And then we just uh, uh, add that uh, to the score here. So we say score plus equals uh, this dot level plus one times p, like that. And we now have all of the uh, scores drawn to the game. Anyway. We probably want to see the level lines in the score though to the screen, so let's go back to the game board now actually. And let's implement uh or let's draw them the the scores to the game here. So we already have reference here to the stat object. So everything we need to do is just say this dot front dot gray dot draw uh, through context and then we'll draw the stat or level. Then at some position, let's say 120 maybe, and want to pad that by five zeros. Uh, if you, yeah, and I just got that from the repository where we took the boilerplate for this game. Anyway, and then let's say that we want to draw it at 30 and at 50 maybe, like that. And then we this should be changed to the lines, and this to the score. So let's see what it looks like. Yeah, it's quite good. Not really where we want it though. Change this to 80, 110 maybe. Let's see. Yeah, it looks quite good. Maybe a bit smaller here. 78. And maybe a bit bigger here, let's say 12. See what that looks like. Seems that we should have Maybe one more pixel here then. Yeah. And it should be down a bit. See, that's perfect. 35, let's call it 15. Nope, it should be up one and it should be probably down one then. Yeah, so that's perfect here. So here we can see uh, that's when we clear lines, uh, this uh, should be updated here, as well as the score, so let's see. Hopefully now when I clear this line I should get 40 as the score and I should clear one line, so let's see. Yeah, so that worked. I had uh, some misspelling though, so let's see. Stat manager level 51, or line 51 should be this again. <laughs> I really can't spell this. Anyway, so. I really think it's quite annoying to like need to 
tap the down button all the time to make the, the tetramino go down. So in Tetris you have a concept that is called hard dropping. That will give you some score and that will drop the uh, the the piece uh, down to the yeah so, so much that it can when you press the spacebar or any other button uh, on the keyboard keyboard. So let's implement that in our game as well. So let's see we can uh, of here in the Tetris game I should say where we do all the moves. Let's have another one that we can call hard drop. So let's create that method. And it's uh, sort of the same thing as the move here. So let's just grab all these. Uh, sort of the same thing as the move down. Just that we want to do uh, move uh, all the way down. So you say while move like that. Just, we just want to set a variable called move here to true and then here we want to set move equal to false and, and uh, stuff like that and here we just want to increment this the score so we say this dot stat dot score plus equals two so when we drop from a uh, high altitude we get more score anyway so let's uh, add that to the spacebar so you can just say if input dot pressed uh, space and uh, this dot hard drop. So let's see if that works. Yes, you can see that I get some scores and that I can uh, move the pieces all the way to the bottom without needing to uh, press that much keys. But anyway, let's finally implement the way where we get the different types of uh, tetraminos. So the concept is very simple. Uh, you can think of it that we will create a generator that we will have sort of like a bag of pieces and then we want to draw uh, uh, draw uh, pieces from that bag. Uh, yeah. Uh, until they're empty and then we want to move, throw in all the pieces and uh, shuffle the bag. So that's sort of the random algorithm they use in Tetris. So you always get so you get a good distribution between the different pieces. So I will call this random uh, randomize, uh, randomizer. So let's see randomizer like that. So let's just increment it here, implement it here as well. Now you can say it is a random because new randomizer that and then each time we reset the game we just want to uh, uh, what do you say initialize the uh, the random uh, generator randomizer so let's create it so create a new file randomizer Yes, yes, so let's define it. Um, class does extend as usual. Yeah, this will be good here. So the constructor, it will uh, just give us, uh, yeah, we just create. ID, ID of all the I sorry um, list of all the IDs so we say all the different pieces we had L piece, the I piece, the T piece, S, Z, O and G pieces and we just want to split them like that and then we want to uh, how many uh, different pieces we have so we say this dot uh, yeah size maybe and we just set that equal to IDS start uh, length like that, and then we just want to call the initialize method uh, like that. And this should of course all be in the constructor, which I forgot to add. <laughs> let's see, here. like that. So let's create an initialize method. 
like this and then we'll set the index uh, on which way on the back we are like to zero and then we just want to create a bag so say a new array this sort of size with the length of the how many pieces we have uh, and then we just add all the different numbers to the bag like that and then we just want to shuffle the array so we say this dot shuffle like that or we'll shuffle the bag so let's create a shuffle function or method so that's simple we create this uh, uh, reference to the array that we can put in as an argument so we say uh, that's equal to the array or this dot bag like that then we set the counter to the array the length like that and then we have a, a temp, temp variable and a index as well like that and then we just say while the counter is greater than zero then we just want to set the index equal to the mat.round mat.random uh, times what do you say the minus minus the counter so we want to subtract one from the counter and then multiply this with this equation here so you set the temporary uh, value to the array at that index uh, sorry at the, at the counter value like that and then we set the array dot counter to the array dot index and then we set the array dot index to the temporary value. Then we just want to return the array. So return array. So that's it for the shuffle functionality. Then we just need to get a way to get the next uh, value from the from the back. So we say next int maybe. So here we just say var i equals this bag. This index like that. And then we just say increment the index, we say this index plus plus. Then we check if the index is uh, uh, greater or equal to the size of the bag or the randomizer, like that. Then we just want to set the index to zero and we want to shuffle the array. And then we just want to return i, of course. But the one we are interested in is getting the id, so we can say uh, next ID maybe that we just return this dot IDS IDS is dot this dot next int like that so that should give us the next uh, the next uh, yeah that should give us the things we need here anyway so let's uh, figure out the, or clear out the bugs so line 31 we have some errors so let's see here. Oh, <laughs> well, that was stupid. Uh, <laughs> should be like this. Sorry. What did I think there? That was really strange. Uh, Tetris line 39. Let's see, 39. Initialize, initialize, like that then. Yes. And then instead of here where we just take uh, in the set next set Ramino uh, we just want to get say this random dot get uh, next ID like that and we should now get random pieces uh, so the game is actually now more or less finished but in Tetris there is a uh, you as a programmer, you don't want the use to be starting with either the S piece or the Z piece uh, for it to be a full-fledged Tetris game. So to fix that, we can go back to the run in the inside of the randomizer, and we just uh, grab the two IDs from the the two IDs from the uh, array here. So we say S ID, and that is equal to 
uh, ids star index of uh, s like that uh, the set id is equal to this dot ids dot index of uh, set like that Should, of course need to be capitalized or well, uppercase so then we just uh, uh, here when we shuffle the array we put this inside of our do while, uh, do while loop so we say do uh, while this uh, bag uh, zero is equal to this dot SID or uh, zero is equal to this dot set ID. So now uh, it will never start with the S or the Z piece, which is a uh, function. Uh, in uh, uh, all the modern versions of Tetris, you can never start with S or Z. Anyway, so the game is now actually very playable. There is uh, no way to, uh, yeah, start in a higher level, except for like typing in. Uh, no, actually, you can't do that either. Yeah, but you can play the game and it works quite well, uh, I should say. See the updated statistics work and everything else like that. So I will leave the game for this for now, then we will do the finishing touches to it uh, in another video in the future, hopefully. I'm really tired at the moment, so that's why I'm quitting it here. So thank you guys for watching, and I hope you learned something, and I hope I see you guys soon. Bye.